Hi there, this is Heather of Shutterbug 101. Today we'll be going over the Panasonic TS30, the waterproof shockproof camera. Let's get started. The Panasonic TS30 is a half-inch, 60-megapixel sensored camera built for going underwater up to 23 feet, is shockproof up to 5 feet, and is freeze-proof down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. This camera is perfect for kids or beginners not interested in Photoshop as it only captures images in JPEG. It also has a 4x zoom, which is a 25 to 100 millimeter equivalent, has a macro focus range of 5 centimeters, and has 23 focus points. Now the TS30 does lack a few things, like how the continuous drive is limited to 1.3 frames per second, and its highest video quality is 720 to 1280. But if you're not capturing motion or doing mainly video, this shouldn't be an issue. Today we will be going over the buttons, doors, and features this camera has to offer. This camera is extremely simple, and with uh, this camera being kind of one of the more basic cameras, it's not a camera I really had on my list, but it was requested. So I'm going to go ahead and go over this and, you know, you can decide whether or not this is the camera for you. I do stand by what I said um, in the beginning where this camera is perfect for kids. Um, you know, it's a pretty decent price. It definitely has great quality pictures, I think, uh, without being able to uh, take raw when that is considered. You know, it's waterproof, it's shockproof, so, you know, if your kid just wants to, oh, I wanna, I wanna take pictures, on, you know, so if you're a photographer and your kids are just always grabbing at your camera, this is great because if they drop it, they, you know, have it in water, it's perfect for summer when they wanna be in the pool. You know, it's a fun little camera. The video quality isn't the best, but, it does do video, you know, so if they want to do little videos, it's perfect. Um, it's definitely going to be, if you were to consider this a kid camera, one of the higher quality kid cameras that there are. Um, although it's not made for kids because adults can still use this, um, it's perfect for those that want good quality pictures that you can take underwater, that it's shockproof, that you know, it's pretty versatile. You're not planning on editing your pictures and maybe video is not so important. But we'll go ahead and we'll go over the general settings and things of this camera so you can understand it a little bit better. Uh, see what this camera is capable of other than it being just a point and shoot because it does have some fun little features and settings. So on the front of the camera here, you can see that we uh, have our information for it being waterproof. So it is waterproof down to eight meters or 26 feet. Um, I believe that I was a little off my introduction there, so it's 26 feet being waterproof. It tells us that it has uh, optical image stabilization, so um, you know it's going to uh, be able to stabilize a little bit. You have at the widest point it is going to be 25 millimeters. Um, if you are unfamiliar with interchangeable lens cameras, this isn't going to be super important to you, um, but you know, it's just letting you know that at its widest point, it's equivalent to 25 millimeters. The aperture is going to be 3.9 to 5.7, so not the best in low light situations. Let's get a little bit closer here. And then we have our on camera flash, and this is also an LED light that you can turn on as well. Um, where you can have an LED light instead of a flash, which is kind of a nice feature. And of course, this is the lens of our camera. Going to the side of our camera here, you can see that it takes an SDXC card. Okay, it's gonna be the extreme capacity. Um, so you can use one of those cards, which is gonna be a faster uh, card and have a faster saving speed. In order to unlock the doors, you can see it has two switches because this is waterproof. Um, we have our battery here, which to undo that, you're just going to hit that switch. It's going to pop right out, put back in there. We have a spot to put an SD card, which is going to be spring loaded. There's a teeny tiny little symbol there that shows what direction the card goes in where one of the corners is cut off, um, just like how an SD card is. So you know which direction to put it in. And uh, when you want to take it out, you always want to push down before you pull it out. That way you don't break it. Um, this cable here does come with the camera, 
This is gonna be for transferring pictures to your computer. Uh, it's going to be for uh, any firmware updates, which I doubt that there will be any with this camera. They're not typically with uh, point and shoots like these. Um, but in case there was one, you know, it's just a way to connect it to your computer. And then when you close this, you always wanna make sure that the red is not showing. So as you can see before I close that there, um, when I went to go and close it, it's showing me that it's not closed all the way. So if you just push, it's going to get rid of that red and then you just lock it there. So very easy to do. And that means that this is fully sealed and no water should get in. On this side of the camera, as you can see, we got nothing there. Bottom of the camera, see we have our uh, universal tripod mount. So it's going to allow us to put it on a tripod or what a lot of people like to do with these um, waterproof cameras is they'll actually put it on a uh, they'll put it on a waterproof um, handle so they can swim with it a little bit easier than just holding it in their hand. They can hold on to a handle and swim with it uh, instead. You can get those at any of your uh, local stores that sell cameras. You know, I believe uh, maybe Target, Best Buy, any of those places will have it. Also your local camera shop, I'm sure that they would have something if you want that uh, sort of attachment. Going to the top of the camera here, you can see that we have our on and off button. So we're gonna turn that on. Uh, when we do turn it on, it's giving you a little alert there saying to prevent water leakage, ensure that the door is properly locked. Okay, so it's having you double check that door because if it's not all locked all the way, it will be flooded with water, okay? Because the inside of this is not waterproof. You do have your shutter button here, so you push halfway to focus, you'll hear the little beep, you push all the way down to take a picture, you know, pretty easy. You have your red button to do video, so you just push once to start video, push again to stop video. Going to the back of the camera here, you can see that, let's bring this up a little bit, there we go. Uh, you can see that we have our zoom here. So it's hard to tell, but this is a W and this is a T. Um, so this is gonna be your wide angle. If you push T, it's gonna be for telephoto. So that's gonna allow you to use that four times zoom go all the way back. Um, we do have our playback mode here, which is what this button's gonna be. It's gonna be to view pictures, which at the moment, there are no pictures in the internal memory of this camera. And this, this is another thing that makes this camera unique is this camera does have an internal memory. Um, a lot of cameras uh, that are newer do not offer the internal memory option because photos tend to get stuck if you lose the cord. Uh, if you lose the cord, you can't get the pictures out and it's hard to find that port anymore. So just in case, you always wanna try and have a card in there instead of using the internal memory, um, just so you know. Uh, so we have our uh, mode button here, which is going to change our different picture taking modes. You have intelligent auto, which is letting the camera do all of the thinking for you. It's going to be able to detect if you're taking a picture of a person versus a picture of a landscape versus macro, all of that sort of thing. So a lot of these directional buttons here that we'll go over um, are not going to be usable because you're letting the camera do all the thinking. Uh, you have your normal picture mode. Um, which is going to allow you to have a little bit more control over changing flash, changing whether or not you want macro, uh, if you want to change brightness or darkness of a photo before you take it. Um, that It's going to allow you to change all of those things. You have creative control, which if we go ahead and access this, what it does is it gives different filters. Okay, so you have expressive, retro, high key, low key, sepia, you have different black and white modes. And what my favorite mode is, is the one point color, where you can select one color out of your image before you take it, and the rest will be black and white. So it's kind of a fun little mode to use, um, especially if your kids are like obsessed with color right now, um, where you can go, okay, now, you know, let's select the color red in this scene. And then what it does is they can walk around the house and look for anything that's red and it'll have the red part show and everything else black and white. So it's kind of a fun uh, little one to use and can really make your pictures pop, uh, which is really nice. Um, and then it kind of just goes back to the top. If we go back to our modes here, we have sports mode, we have snow mode, beach and surf advanced underwater so it's going to be able to counteract the blues and the water get you more accurate colors uh, panorama so you can move from left to right to get wide establishing shots 
and then other scene modes like portrait, soft skin, scenery, night portrait, night scenery, food, you got different baby ones, pets, sunset, um, high sensitivity uh, to light, um, starry sky, uh, going shooting through glass, so if you're driving in the car, you know, so it has all these sort of different modes here, which is really, really neat. So that way, these are still automatic modes, but you're telling the camera exactly what the situation is, so it kind of limits it to guessing what the situation is. Uh, for the rest of the video, I'm going to just go over uh, in normal picture mode because um, it'll actually show more on the menu than the rest will. That way you can kind of see the bigger picture of what this camera can do. Um, so on normal picture mode, which will allow you more control, if you push up on the dial, that'll allow you to make your scene a little bit darker or a little bit lighter, okay? Uh, without changing any major settings, which is pretty, you know, pretty great. Then if you push to the right, that's going to be your flash. Personally, I like to keep flash off unless I really need it, but it does have automatic flash, auto flash, red eye, flash always on, depending on what you want to do. If you push to the left, that's going to be your timer mode. So if you would like to set up a timer um, for a group shot or something like that, then you can set up a timer. If you push down, that's going to be your macro mode. So you have macro zoom, which will allow you to zoom uh, with these, with it still being macro. So it allows you to use the five centimeter uh, macro mode and then zoom into it even further, which is pretty insane. And then you have regular macro mode, which will allow you to put your camera up to five centimeters away from your uh, subject to focus and take a really up close picture. Um, then we have our display button, which changes the display on the screen. So this is the one that I personally like. It tells you your uh, battery level, how many pictures you have left, what mode you're in, uh, what video and photo quality you have, the flash. It's telling me that the stabilization is on, which is great. Um, so if I hit this again, it's the same thing. It's just telling me how much time I have for video. So five minutes, 52 seconds built in. Uh, this is just blank. We have the grid lines, which will help you uh, find good balance to your photos. If you find that your photos are mainly crooked or you know, you're feeling the need to crop your photos, this will help you with the rule of thirds. Um, and then we have this uh, setting here, except it tells you the date at the bottom. Oh, actually, okay. And then we are back to this setting here, which is, like I said, my favorite setting. The last button down here is going to be your quick menu. Okay, it's also gonna double as your trash can button. So if you're playing back pictures and you found one that you don't like or that was blurry or was an accident, you can hit this button here and it's going to ask if you would like to delete one, delete several or delete all of your pictures. Okay, uh, so that's what that button does on the playback mode, but on shooting mode, when you're on this screen and you hit the quick button, okay, it gives you a little quick menu of things to change like your photo quality, which you always wanna keep at 16M. Do not change this. You have your ISO, which is going to be your image sensitivity to light. Personally, I would just keep this on auto. It's just a little bit easier that way. Same for your white balance. This is going to adjust your temperature in the photo, so warmer or cooler, but it does a fairly good job choosing the white balance for you. You have your burst mode, which again is not super high as 1.3 pictures per second. Uh, so it's not super fantastic. Um, you have your monitor luminance, so the camera here, so you have um, auto power monitor, you have power monitor, and then you have high angle, which if you were shooting um, from up high, it actually helps you be able to uh, see your scene just a little bit easier. And then you have your LED light, which you can put on or off when shooting, if you want LED light instead of your flash which for me, I think to, uh, shoots out a more even, uh, an even soft light versus something that's a little bit harsh. Um, also, I wanna apologize for my white balance changing so frequently in this video. I think it's interacting with the blue on the camera versus the uh, white on the screen, so my apologies for that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go over our menu here. On our record menu, it's going to be specifically for taking pictures, so we'll select that first. 
Um, it'll be your picture size, so very similar to what's on your quick menu, your ISO, white balance. All right, so you have your autofocus mode, which you can choose to be like face detection if you're taking pictures of people or automatically focus on faces. Uh, tracking for moving subjects, uh, the whole 23 focus area to uh, have it be able to have that freedom of choosing anywhere on the screen, which would be front focus. You have your one area focus subject, which is going to be uh, one specific area, and then you have spot, which is one specific little point of that 23 focus point. Personally, I like to have it on the one area. It allows me to choose a more specific area versus a specific point on this camera. You can, this is another way to do the face recognition if you were taking pictures of people and turn that on. Um, eye exposure, eye resolution. This is kind of up to you whether you want to use this or not. It's basically intelligent exposure, intelligent resolution where it kind of adjusts it for you. Um, digital zoom, I would always keep this off. Digital zoom, although it does get you a little bit farther than that 100 millimeter spot, it is very unclear um, when you use it. It's just kind of tearing apart the pixels. It's lowering the quality. Uh, your burst mode, again, you can turn that on or off. You can do a time lapse shot on this camera. Um, the color mode, so again, if you wanted to change uh, the different filters, uh, you have your autofocus assist lamp, which is which is essentially using the LED light to be able to shine out a light when you're focusing if it can't detect any detail or if it's too dark. You have your red eye removal if you would like that on or off. Your stabilizer. Um, the only time you would really turn this off is if you had it on a standard tripod um, because at that point the tripod is doing the stabilizing but other than that it's pretty good to just keep this on. If you would like the date stamped on the pictures you can do that. Uh, your clock set if the clock is wrong and then we're back to the top there so if we want to go back here and we'll go over motion picture okay we have our record quality um, so personally I like to go with the highest quality in this camera uh, it's not very high it's lower than HD quality so really the only good place to view this is maybe on a computer um, that doesn't have a super high quality like a 4k um, but like even on your on our television sets these days, it re almost requires HD. So showing the videos from this on a television set uh, may not show excellent quality. Um, so just keep that in mind. Continuous autofocus. You always want to have that on when it comes to uh, to doing videos. So it you know adjusts its focus for you as you move. And then we have our setup menu. So you have your uh, waterproof precautions. It kind of runs you through making sure that this camera is uh, indeed ready to go through into the water. You have your clock set. You can set world time. Uh, you can set a travel date on here if you are uh, doing traveling, so adjust the time for you. Uh, you can turn the beep on or off on this camera. I personally like the little confirmation beep uh, that it gives me. The speaker volume when playing back videos. The monitor display, if you want it brighter, darker, whatever you would like. The monitor luminance. The grid lines, so um, again, you can get that by hitting your display button. The histogram, if you want to see the highlights and shadows in your images. Uh, video record area. You have your LED light, again, if you want to turn that on or off. Um, auto power off, um, which just means if you're not doing anything with this camera after a certain amount of time, it will just turn itself off. I have this one set to five minutes. Um, auto review, so that means after you've taken a picture, how long you want the picture to pop up for, or if at all. Um, two seconds is usually a good uh, time. Number reset, if you want to reset the number um, of pictures that this takes. So when you take pictures on an SD card and it does 0001, 0002, you can actually reset that number if you would like. Every time that you put a new card in, uh, you have your reset button which if you have started playing with the settings and all of a sudden the camera is doing something funny it's taking in a funny color that you don't know how to change back um, an easy way to get rid of that is just to go into your setup menu and go to reset and it's just going to reset all the settings back to factory um, and it should get rid of that no problem uh, your output which is just the connection of that cord uh, rotate display if you want that on auto which it means if you're taking a vertical image versus a horizontal image uh, version display 
if you want to see what um, firmware version this is. Formatting your card. Uh, this is fairly important to know. I say it in all of my videos. So formatting your card is um, essentially going to permanently erase all pictures off your card and it's going to reset it back to new. Now the reason that you would ever want to do that is if say you were on vacation and you took a bunch of pictures, you came back, you want to make sure that you back up your pictures to your computer. I cannot stress that enough before you even touch format. But say you want a vacation, you want to, you know, start fresh with your card after you've made sure that you back up all your images. You're going to go in, you're going to format instead of going delete all with the trash can because with the trash can, it just deletes the visible file and allows it to be overwritten. So doing that so many times can actually lock you out of your card. It can cause corruption to your images, it's like a virus almost, where it just kind of eats away a little bit at a time. It's very, it's corruption. So it's important that uh, if you do want to clear out your card, that again, after you back up your pictures, you go in and format it, not just erase it. Okay, and do that every now and then. It's not important that you do it after every single time you use your camera and back up your images, but just know that that's what format means and that is what it's for. You can change the language. You can also change the uh, stabilizer as well if you want uh, to do that. Other than that, like I said, this is a pretty simple camera. Um, very easy to use. If you didn't want to use any of those filter settings or anything, you just have it set to intelligent auto, which out of the box, that's what it's set to. You have your on button, you take the picture, this is for video. That's it. That's all you got to know at that point. Um, but you know, I wanted to show you guys what else that it did, and, you know, that you can have a little bit more fun with it. Um, little teeny tiny camera it does work really well, you know. Definitely fits in the palm of your hand there. You guys have any questions about this camera, something I didn't go over um, in enough detail for you, or maybe you just need a better explanation, please let me know in the comments below. If you have any uh, special requests for cameras that I haven't done yet, also let me know in the comments below. And until next time, keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.